Today we're going to talk about arguments and argument validity. And this is in section 2.3 in your text. So in mathematics, an argument is not a dispute. This is not a disagreement. This is not something, you know, an argument you're having with a family member. Instead, it's just a sequence of statements called premises that end in a conclusion. And the idea is a, a valid argument means that if the premises are true, then the conclusion follows automatically. So let's see an example of this. So a very common first example of an argument is, if Socrates is a man, then Socrates is mortal. Socrates is a man. So what can we conclude? Well, we can conclude that Socrates is mortal. Okay, so these two statements, these are called the premises. And then the conclusion follows this three little dots, by the way, that's another way, a shorthand way of writing therefore. So this is the conclusion. And the goal of an argument is we want to determine, is it valid? Right, well, what does valid mean? A valid argument is one in which the conclusion follows necessarily from the premises. Okay, and we're going to see what that means in this video. Okay. So it turns out that Aristotle, the ancient Greek philosopher, determined that the validity of an argument is based on the form of the argument, not its content. So it doesn't actually matter what our argument says as long as the form is correct. Well, what would be the form? Well, first, we need to identify um, in our statements, I'm going to look at this first statement, if Socrates is a man, then Socrates is mortal. I'm going to break this up. This is an if-then. I'm going to call this first part P and the second part Q, our good old trusty variables. And then, of course, this is also P and this is Q. So our argument form looks like this. P implies Q. P is true, therefore Q is true, right? It's just the same thing I wrote out in the argument itself. Okay, so this is the argument form of the argument, and we're going to be using these a lot. So you want to get used to writing an argument form in this manner. So let's take a look. Um, we say it's valid. If and only w if, whenever st statements are substituted that made all the make all the premises true, the conclusion is also true. Well, how do I do that? So how do we do this? We can do this with a truth table.
So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a truth table out for this argument. And we're going to identify something called a critical row. Let's define a critical row. A critical row is a row in the truth table where all the premises are true. And if every single critical row has a true conclusion, then the argument form is valid. And I do mean every critical row. Okay, so let's take a look at this. First, I'm giving you um, sort of a general algorithm for how to test for validity, but we're gonna see how this works now. So this is the argument form we've been working with. And I'm gonna fill out this truth table. So there's our initial P and Q. Now let's go through an implication True implies true is true. Right? If I offer you a job, if you show up and then I give you the job, uh, that was a true statement. If I offer you the job and then don't give you the job, that was a false statement. And these last two are vacuously true. And then I'm just going to actually redraw P here. Because what I'm doing is I'm doing these in the order of the rows in the argument form. So this could be condensed. We don't really need these two rows, but they don't hurt. Okay, so we've got we've got some premises. These are premises. This is our conclusion. Right, and remember these match up to our premises in our argument form and our conclusion. So now I want to look for critical rows. A critical row is any time all the premises are true. So here is a critical row. Right, because we have true. I'm not even looking at the conclusion over here. Maybe a better way to do this would be to just do just draw just color the row of the premises. So here you see they're both true, and that's the only critical row. In every other row. We've got a false, we've got a false, or multiple falses. So we only have one critical row. Let's make a note. So this is our critical row. And so now, once we've found all of our critical rows, we look at the conclusion. And notice we have a true conclusion for every critical row. Um, which means this is a valid argument. Okay. So this is how we tell validity. We look at an argument and we put it in a truth table and we find the critical rows and then we check and if every single critical row, uh, every single one, has a true conclusion, then it is a valid argument. Let's look at another example. This example is a little bit more involved, 
but it'll be good practice. So we have this new argument form, and again, we have our premises and our conclusion. And so let's fill out this table. Oh, we've got three variables here. So we need to have eight rows. Okay, and then I'm just going to work through it. So this next column is negative r. So I'm just going to take the opposite. Okay, now we have q or r. So I'm going to be looking at this column and this column and oring them together. So true or false is true, true, false, true. Remember, we have an or, so if either of them are true, our output is true. Okay. And now let's do P and R. So we have P and R. So now it's an and, so they both have to be true. Okay. Now let's look at this column, which is P implies that column. So we have P implies this q versus uh, q or not r. So remember, true does imply true. That is true. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. True implies true is true. And then remember, as long as you start with a false statement, these are all vacuously true. Let's look. This column now is Q implies P and R, which is in that column. So I'm going to come through. True implies true is true. True implies true is false is false. Now, again, we've got some false starts. So we have where P is, or excuse me, where Q is false. So these are going to be vacuously true. And then we have true implies false, that's false. And true implies false, that's false. Hardest thing about these is keeping track of which column you're doing. False implies, implies false is true, and false implies false is true. Okay, we're almost done. Let's look at this last column, this is the conclusion, and it's going to be P implies R. So true implies true is true. True implies false is false. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. We actually don't even need to continue, but I will. This is false implies true is true. False implies false is true. False, these are just all going to be true. Okay, so why did I say we don't need, even need to continue? It's because I noticed we, we, I was looking at the premises. These are the premises. The other ones over here, they were just to help us get the premises. So we can ignore these now. So I'm going to look at the premises and I'm going to try to find all the places all the rows that are critical rows. 
So here's a critical row where both premises are true. Here's a critical row where both premises are true. And then these last two are both critical rows. But what I spotted was that while this is true, this is false. And it's, if we have any critical row that has a false conclusion, this becomes invalid. So this is an invalid argument. Okay, so this is how you determine argument validity.